kind of a basic feather pattern. Uh, simple, or a little more simple. How do you get that smoky brown? Um, I think I have three different browns. I did a 50-50 burnt umber, raw umber. And then I did, I took that same color and added purple, dioxide, the dioxide purple. And then I have another one that I took and then I added the raw sienna to the, uh, to the 50-50 mix, just to give it a little more So the purple yellow. dark and the brown? And the turf, yeah. Sienna light, you know? Yeah. And then I, nice so I don't know if they're, I've never seen black ducks, so I don't know if they're too brown or their black ducks are more black, they're darker. They yeah. look awesome. So, thank you. Look I'll, uh, I, I did take that color and added some black too and did some, yeah. but I think I probably have to go back through and I was thinking they probably a little too brown, but. Mm -hmm. Did you use dull coat on at the end of time? I haven't sprayed them yet. Mm -hmm. I uh, I did put a um, little finish on the bills. I used that uh, that Janssen's um, matte varnish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which gives it a nice little sheen. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll uh, I think I'm gonna darken them up a little bit and then then spray them. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, so when you uh, put the heads in there, how did you do your heads? Did you uh, nestle that head in there? Yeah, so the seam, a lot of times I can see my seams. But I'm guessing it's probably right through there. Okay. And then I, took, I put the head, I doll it. Put it down, and then I drop trace the cutout of the head. I'm going to take a Forstner bit with my drill press to set the height of my shelf, and and cut out that wood there so it'll sit down flat. But the head is straight, but it goes into the body back in here somewhere. So your head is not angry cut; it's it's a straight it's, cut. It's a straight cut. Okay. I do that with all of them. I cut them level so that way you can turn your head yep. any way you want. Um, do you hollow, you, are you hollowing the heads now or is, they, is that no. solid? That's still light for a solid head. Yeah, this is too below. Um, I didn't hollow the heads on these. If it were a high, after the drake I didn't either, but I, I carved a brand. I carved, I hollowed out the head on that. If that head was higher and stuff. So if it's a higher head, a swan, I usually would, or um, just to get the weight. I like getting the weight closer to the water. Tom, how on those birds and body, how thick, how thin did you go down the thick swan? They're probably quarter inch, maybe quarter inch. And I use a Turner's, one of those. Um, I think I've had in here before, but Turner is used for checking calipers, yeah. calipers like Turner's caliper. So when I'm on a drill press, I'll, I'll, I'll eyeball that. I, I do draw some guidelines in there and set my drill press so it doesn't, it's not going to go through. And then I come back with a Fordham with a Fordham. Fordham's all good though. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Would you not have been hunting them so? Uh, could. <laughs> but, um, I, 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 I do, I hollow them up pretty good. But my, my cedar birds aren't this light. They're, they don't, even if I hollow them up to a quarter inch, they still aren't this light. They're too close, Yeah. Yeah. What's the difference between that and cedar? Is too cool easy? Doesn't make it. Because I know with the, with the with white cedar, it's like you go one way, you start splintering. And yeah, mm -hmm. Tupelo doesn't do that. Okay. Um, cedar carves nicer with 
nice and you can just you can do tupelo that way too and i do enjoy doing it that way but it it's not as fast it doesn't peel off like cedar um but you can do it with a good sharp knife um, is that more expensive than cedar yeah it's more expensive okay but like everyone does white cedar. White cedar. Like I think if you're stuff. doing that hunting before, okay. I think white cedar is probably the way to go. And I guess, um, isn't white cedar rot resistant or, yeah. or too below? Too below, you have to go so, right? Too below comes. It, it, and actually, the part we carve with is on, it comes out of the water. It's the part that's submerged in the water. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it, I think it's easier to do detail work with Google because you're not fighting the grain. So, but I'll use more. I use a lot of little power tools on the heads and the bills and stuff. And um, and and sanding is a dream when it comes to Tupelo. Cedar is bad, but Tupelo it sands real a lot easier. And you're not putting heels on those. I I have heels on you. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I will. I've seen without keels sometimes they're cold. I see they really move easy in the water nice if you're in shallow stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been thinking about doing that too in internal yeah. weight and like the guy that was painting. Yeah, bottom paintings. Mm -hmm. October, I guess even before that, a game fair. I begged Tom for a swan pattern um, and got from him in October. The guy that I, I hunt with from time to time, he thinks that two swans is all he will ever need and he'll kill every duck, every duck he sees from now on. Um, so I agreed to make him these swans five years ago, but I told him they'd be too heavy and I wouldn't hunt with them. So he kept begging. Every every time I see him, every couple of months, he wants he's to know where his swans are. <laughs> so I said, all right, first of the year, I'm going to be done with everything. I'm not carving anything other than these swans until these swans are done. So I put the last coat of clear coat on them the last Saturday of January thinking I'll bring him to the club. My daughter that day said, oh, by the way, I just tested positive for COVID. <laughs> by Monday, I had COVID. <laughs> so it was one of those, well, I'm not going to the club and I'm not going to the, the February decoy show. Uh, but I made these two giant swans. They're Tom's pattern. Um, they are canvas with cedar spine and pine bottom boards, uh, basswood heads on them. <clears throat> there is a dowel that runs through the head and the neck into the, the pine spine. And then they're double screwed. Uh, I wouldn't carry them around and swing them by the head, but I don't think they'd break if you were to. Uh, and they have black cork built up on the chest, that's why they look all cellulite -y. Um, I'm finding out that if you make white birds for people, give them to them right after they're done, because they're filthy. Every time you touch them, you put dirt on them. So I'll probably end up having to repaint them before I turn them over anyway. They're too big to balance in my bathtub and they're hunted, going to be hunted over, so he wants keels on them. So I told him he's going to have to wait until this, the water goes out because I'm not going to go out there with a chainsaw and cut a spear hole or, and balance it in the, <laughs> in the spear hole. So, uh, you can blood test them up at uh, Alex. They're going to have tanks for the fish decoys. Come up there and blow them there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing, even in canvas, it's still eight pounds. So by the time it gets a keel on it, it's probably going to weigh 10 pounds each. So he's going to have his two swans, 
and they're going to be the only decoys he brings out. Those are going to be too heavy to carry anything else. Uh, and then I, keeping on the canvas steam, I made. Um, I realized that I didn't do the club project for 2020, and Tom had done Swan or uh, not Swan canvas back pattern for that. So I made a pair of canvas backs. Uh, wanted since they were going to be canvas. So they're canvas canvas back. So every time I told my kid they're can cans, and I made her dance through the living room. Um, so I did. I painted them in an antique style. Uh, this was kind of a mason like this style of paint. So I kind of went that route with it. And then I did a, a pen as well. Uh, I know Bruce has said it. I think everyone who's come in here with a canvas back hand has said 50 pictures on the internet, 50 different colors. So I just went with one that I felt worked and then really dulled it down and made it you know, as soft as I could by hand brushing and stippling and everything else. So I think I even used some of Danny's secret sauce on it <laughs> just to make it really dry. <laughs> You know, they will eventually get keels on them unless somebody at Alexandria decides they want them before that. So. Yeah. And the swans are having neck one piece or two pieces? Two pieces. Okay. And the yeah. neck, which way is the grain running? Up and down? The grain on the neck runs up and down. Up and down. Yeah. And then there's a dowel through it to take some of that out of it. Uh, the canvas bags. The lumber for those came from Dave's parents' house. So I'm, I'm still playing with, with free wood for a lot of this stuff. So, <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, if I had actually gotten here on time, I would have put these on ahead and uh, got them up so you guys could see them. Um, actually, since uh, last meeting, actually bought with them one or two days of Matt getting COVID. Um, I had a homeowner near, near uh, Bill Cedarleaf's house that he didn't see fit to tell me that he wasn't feeling well. Mm -hmm. We were working on a tile uh, layout on his bathroom and mm -hmm. he later went in and got tested for COVID and uh, came back positive. So I, uh, I ended up coming down with COVID uh, within just a few days of Matt, uh, not from the same source, but um, Gave me an excuse to do a little bit of painting. I quarantined out at my mother's house <clears throat> and I uh, actually I pulled out some paint brushes uh, besides painting walls at her house. I actually uh, got this one done. Um, this has uh, been on the shelf of lost motivation as uh, Matt likes to call it. I think that's an absolutely phenomenal name for that shelf that all of us have. Um, the uh, Painting of hens, anybody that, does anybody like painting hens? My daughter. <laughs> do do you? I, you're, you're, you're the only guy I know. I, 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 this was um, my entry for, one of my entries for Purim, and I kept going, why did I even start with this one here? It's just annoying. Um, one thing I did, I did, I think I had the Drake in here um, a while ago. One of the things that they did with these guys is they wanted a high neck crate. <laughs> the last high neck decoy that they did was a gold mine. I donated it to uh, Delta Waterfall. I had a buggery time getting that decoy to not list from side to side. I've been trying to talk to Tom, uh, or I have talked with Tom several times as to how to get that head lighter, that big puffy head. Um, that, that, that golden eye just it wanted to rock side to side and at first before I started doing anything with it, it would actually tip over. Um, this one I got the bright idea. Um, I got a whole bunch of oak lumber from my uh, father's house. This is a six by six red cedar. Uh, I hollowed it out and I inserted a piece of, uh, don't ask me if it's white or red oak, I don't know which it is. Um, but it's quite heavy on the bottom, and 
both of these decoys did that with, and they'll both self right without the keel on it. I'm still trying to decide if I want to put a keel on these just so that they float in the tank a little bit better. But um, I was quite pleased. I, uh, I, I think I actually came up with the uh, smart idea that actually worked. Um, but uh, yeah, these, these both self right without the keel on them. And uh, of course, if I don't put a keel on them, then I gotta figure out a different way to hook a strap bar to them. But uh, red cedar. Acrylics. I think the heads are red cedar. And then internal oak, whatever ballast board, whatever you want to call it. Thank you. A lot of jobs. Well, I have a morning dove with uh, dropped wings, uh, so it can eat his back up. Uh, birds made out of tupelos, painted in uh, acrylic, no, it's painted in alkyd oils. The uh, fence board that he's sitting on is actually a fence board, and, um, and the base is the same cedar, so those two things are cedar. And. Uh, Anybody who hunts doves next fall, if you get a nice one, I'd be happy to do something with you because, uh, you know, they're so subtle in a lot of different areas and unless you got a bird there, and even if you had a bird, they still darken up. So, and if you go by photographs, well, it just depends on whose camera and how much light and all that kind of stuff. So, um, that's all I got to say, I guess. For a verse, you need a bird or what? A dove, yeah. I've got one. Oh, yeah, great. Is it, is it oh, kind of mature? It's frozen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to talk. How is it connected to the fence book? What? How is it connected to the fence post? How did you do the joint? Um, this one is a two-part epoxy. Sometimes when I do these uh, birds, not ducks, on different mountings, sometimes I have a, a little metal pole, sometimes I have a wood dowel, it all kind of depends. But I had cut this one at a slant, and I wanted it to sit more this way. However, I changed my idea for the base halfway through it, so you know, it doesn't screw up all the time. So anyway, after I got uh, wood removed on, on the bottom here, you can see, I don't know, maybe you can see, there's quite a bit of uh, space below the board and the body here. Um, so I just uh, made a groove all the way across, and after I got it painted, I had to go back in there with a chisel and remove oil paint just to get the thing to fit better. And then uh, the boxy sculpt up to fill in there so it's a smooth surface. So you said after you painted the bird? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, I had the bird painted and the, and the base painted, and then I had to fit the bird to the base. Well, because I screwed up that original cut there. The, I, 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 when I paint, I, you know, I had, I was, uh, I had a little dowel, five eighths of dowel with a screw epoxy vent that I just screwed into the bottom. So it was just a matter of hauling it out and, uh, you know, and then uh, I didn't put epoxy all the way out to the edge because I didn't want it running on. This stuff was already painted. So, uh, <laughs> and tape it up and glue it in there, you know, and, and two-part epoxy is usually, except that JB, I don't like that stuff. I can't get even squeezes out of there. So sometimes I get a, a little less drying and sometimes it dries too fast. Yeah. So. Of course, is the way. if I ever got any brains, I could probably change all that. Say what? Said if you weigh the two parts on a uh, reloading scale, 
Oh, oh come so on. <laughs> 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 You ever see how I mix oil paint? I might go through 15 tubes just to get one color. Well, if I got another 10 years coming up, then I can get some of the stuff figured out. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to change gears here a little bit. I've been working on some birds, but I bought this one last week, and uh, I got to admit, Jerry and others here, I'm, I'm a transplanted Wisconsinite, so, um, but uh, I didn't know anything about Lake Koshkanon in southern Wisconsin between Madison and Milwaukee until I had moved here probably 15 years ago. And I think I was actually reading something in Doug's book about Lake Koshkanon having an influence on Heron Lake in southern Minnesota. And I'm going, well, I grew up over there like 60 miles from this place and never heard of it. And so I started reading some history and I happened to go out to view a decoy collection last week. And this is the only decoy I bought out of the whole thing because it had a personal um, relationship to where I grew up over there. And this is a Koshkanon bird. And I, the reason I know that is because there's a brand on the bottom that says Hordes. And this brand um, was the Hordes Hotel from 1868 until 1880. And then the brand on these decoys became David Hordes. So I know this is before 1880, the body. Um, the, there's two brands on the top of this. We have about 150 different brands for Kashkanon birds. These two brands of the top of this bird are not on the current list. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's going to be a treasure hunt and history test here to figure out what it is. Um, it was just a cool bird when I saw it, and there were two other birds in the collection that I considered purchasing last week, but this was the only one that I had to leave with at the end of the day. I do have to tell you, though, the guy I went and saw the collection at, he just didn't collect a few decoys in the past. He loves to collect Ford Mustangs. Cool. And I got to view his collection of Mustangs. There were 12 Mustangs down in the shop shed down there. They weren't that old. The oldest one was the 1990. Everything was from 90 to 2020. <laughs> and if it wouldn't have been snowing last Thursday, he said he would have given me a ride. <laughs> but this was just a cool bird, and I thought I wanted to share it with you now. Show you a little history because it does relate to Minnesota here too. What's so. the name of that lake you said? Lake Koshkanon. And yeah, heard of it. <laughs> there you go. Is it south of Milwaukee? No, between Milwaukee and Madison. Oh, so, um, oh okay. That is, okay. So, and influence also from the East Coast, uh, Susquehanna Flats, and, and out there. And I'm, I have a feeling this body may have come from out east to Wisconsin. I don't know that for sure. <laughs> yeah, it was at Erie Lake or Wisconsin. Yeah, I have to do it. I carved foam and I made a red breasted merganser. <laughs> well, she's a little top heavy. I'm gonna weigh it down, but uh, depending on what beach you're on, if it's a nude beach, well, you can, you know, Jenny, that'll be a dollar. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to show something, and I thought that would be a good one. Don't <laughs> well, feel free to pass her around. <laughs> Don't be so handsy. A long time. It's a good thing we don't meet at the church. <laughs> and, and as far as painting hens, I do like painting hens. <laughs>